This box contains quartz sand. To the sand, a measured amount of water or solution has been added. For example, sand in the far left compartment has been mixed with calcium sulfate solution and the second with deionized water. Notice how the box is slanted about 15 degrees from vertical so that the roots will grow along the glass where they can be seen, measured, and photographed. The camera is attached to a timer and a relay so that a frame is taken automatically at a set time interval. The lights are turned on only when a picture is being made to avoid overheating the roots. The boxes have plastic partitions and a removable glass front. They measure 45 centimeters high and are five centimeters deep. The soil which fills a compartment is air dried and weighed. Here he is weighing a dark brown sandy loam topsoil, but he could be weighing a subsoil of some kind. The soil is then mixed with a measured amount of water. Of course, various chemical treatments can be incorporated at this point. For example, he could be adding distilled water, limed water, or a solution containing aluminum ion or sodium chloride. The soil and water must be mixed so that they form a uniform mixture with no hard clods or dry spots. This helps to assure that root growth will be uniform. The soil mixture is shaken into the compartments so that it falls lightly and uniformly. Soil structure must be controlled by shaking like this so that soil density effects will not mask treatment effects. A funnel facilitates the delivery of the soil into a compartment. The compartments may be filled with different kinds of soil or a soil profile may be simulated by overlaying a subsoil with a topsoil as is shown in the third box. Once the compartments are filled with prepared soils, the box is sealed so that soil water content remains constant. The seeds are germinated before planting. The cotton seed used in most of the experiments you will see is especially inbred for maximum uniformity. Since cotton puts down a large taproot before the cotyledons emerge, these seed provide the growing root with a relatively constant food source. Pre-germinated seeds with a hypocotyl about one millimeter long are selected to further ensure uniformity. Planting must be done with care to avoid injuring the delicate hypocotyl tip. Each seed is placed into a prepared hole with the emerging hypocotyl pointing down.
For pictures at high magnification, the camera is mounted on an elevator which automatically moves the camera parallel to the glass window. It follows the tip of a root as it grows. Also, the timer is set so that pictures are taken every 30 seconds. They are taken every three to five minutes for more distant shots at low magnification. Since different time intervals have been used in the various experiments, the passage of time will be indicated in each experiment by a tone at the end of each hour. The root tip is shaped like a cone and pushes through the soil as the result of forces originating in the elongation zone. When the camera is held still, a segment of root is seen to elongate and then to stop. After a time, root hairs develop. The distance between the root tip and the mature region is greater in these roots than in roots grown in the field because the soil has been intentionally kept at a uniform low density. The root often appears to follow a path of least resistance. It moves not in a perfectly straight line, but with some side-to-side -side motion. These roots are growing in a box through which a mixture of 80% nitrogen and 20% oxygen is passing at a constant rate. A red mark at the tip of each root will indicate the time when pure nitrogen gas is passed through the chamber for 180 minutes. The O shows when oxygen is again added to the airstream passing through the system. Notice that the lack of oxygen has almost entirely stopped root growth. The region of the root which has been affected most is the region of elongation. The root tip and the mature region seem to remain alive even though they appear somewhat discolored, but the elongation region dies and shrinks. The steel is certainly alive because lateral roots are produced on the taproot wherever there was mature tissue at the time of treatment with nitrogen gas. This sequence shows details of the effect of anaerobic conditions on root growth. The sign which says 180 remains in the field for the duration of the 180 minute treatment with nitrogen gas. Then when the sign is removed, air is again passed through the box. 
With a three-hour treatment, this root dies in exactly the same way as the roots in the previous sequence. Shorter times of 10 minutes or 30 minutes without oxygen merely stop root elongation temporarily. The root stops growing during the treatment time but begins again when oxygen is returned. Root development can be affected by such root diseases as nematode infection. Since pictures must be taken fast to see nematode activity, black and white film was used in the following sequence, which shows nematodes entering roots at several points. In many agricultural areas, a loose topsoil covers a subsoil which is unfavorable for rapid root growth. Compaction of the subsoil is one condition which can limit the development of a large, efficient root system. Roots may be stopped entirely or may have their rate of growth drastically reduced. Sometimes a root will turn and grow along a hard layer until it can grow down a crack or a soft spot in the subsoil. Whatever aspect of root growth is being observed, the camera records permanently and graphically what the human observer can see only at intervals.